Rich Gonzalez with Jason Eichelberger. We are here in Clovis wrapping up the 103rd CIF State Track and Field Championships. Plenty of highlights. First, we'll start with some quick hits on what happened in the field events. First, going from the outhouse to the penthouse, Ashanti Ely out of Whitney in the high jump. Last year, she was a no height. This year, state champion, tying her career best at 5 feet 10 inches. In the discus throw, we had going Nylea Fields out of Carruthers. Small school, less than 700 students. She became a two-time state champion. Along the same theme, in the boys' throws, two-time champion also Brendan C. of J. Sarah winning the discus throw. Made it pretty difficult and stressful for coach, head coach Chase Frazier, but that's what he's used to. Brendan went ahead and had his winning mark in the first round, then five straight fouls. The big story, the other half of the equation of the field events, and that would have been Jake Stafford. Jake went ahead and first went sixth in the discus throw. Career best mark, 182 feet, eight, uh, two inches. But then the big surprise, after going ahead and having a big breakthrough at CAF Finals, he did it again on the biggest stage. Wins ahead and wins the state championship in the high jump, mark of six feet seven inches. Those two athletes combined for 33 points and a big surprise, number two overall in the team standings. Also in the boys' field events, Hilton Green of Buchanan cleared 16 6 in the pole vault. First time ever that a kid won the state title in the pole vault on his home facility. Also, Dajan A. Williams in a big showdown over in the girls' triple jump competition. She went ahead and set a career best by six inches in the final round, and that was just enough to defeat by one inch Megan Humphreys, the outstanding one-person high-scoring team out of Castaic. Also, on the track, shifting over, for the first time ever, we had the 4x800 relay. On the girls' side, Del Norte of San Diego, 758.99. That's the number two mark in California history. We thought that was great. Then the boys hit the track, and my goodness, three, four of the top nine marks in history, including the three fastest over the last seven years. The winners, San Clemente, they went up 738.59. And there were a lot of coaches and a lot of kids afterwards talking about the excitement of that 4x800 relay, the first time ever. And we're going to see a lot of rewriting of the national list for this year out of tonight's races. Switching over on to some of the bigger topics, Jason, we're going to bring you in. First off, let's talk about the girls' 100-meter dash where we had a bit of a surprise winner. <laughs> yes. Uh, Naya Clayton, Oaks Christian, uh, 11.45. She ties the win legal state leader mark and obviously winning a state championship. A fantastic effort for her. Uh, definitely in a field in which, you know, there were some other runners that definitely garnered attention, including our defending state champion, who unfortunately was not able to finish the race. A big, big breakthrough for Naya Clayton today. We saw Naya had a lot of poise in the last few weeks and today on the biggest stage as you mentioned she came through to take down a pretty stacked field <laughs> let's go over to the girls distances the long way to showdown where we had Sadie Englehart last year's state champion at 1600 meters against Mackenzie Brown JW North last year's state champion at 800 since then we've seen a lot of a lot more experiences and a lot of improvement from both of them and then Pretty magical outcomes today. <laughs> so Sadie Englehart, obviously, she starts her day in the 1,600 meters. She goes 213 and through 800 meters, which obviously extremely, extremely fast. Uh, coming down the final 100 and, and getting to that finish line, 433.45. She sets the new meet record over uh, Christine Babcock, former Woodbridge star from 2008. Then comes back later in the 800, a showdown again with Mackenzie Brown, the defending state champion who qualified as the last qualifier yesterday. The two of them kind of go mano y mano, kind of a setup for how things went last year where they were battling at the end. This time, Sadie pulls the victory out, 207-22. She becomes the first runner since 1975 to pull off that double. Uh, that's a, an incredible feat, 48 years in between that happening in the state meet. I think even more than, than the, the victory in the 800, and that was a great double, but just how aggressive Sadie was in that 1600. <laughs> I was a bit surprised when she came out so aggressive through the first 600, and I thought to myself, what's she trying to do? Is she trying to basically have everybody else surrender in the race, and then she can peel back and save for the eight? No. Then the light went on. No, she's going after it. 
And when she was approaching the finish, I thought she was going to break the mark. I thought she did. And then when I saw the clock and it was basically showing 4.33 inches, I'm like, oh, wow, a little slower than I thought. And a bit of a heartbreak when she was close <laughs> but just missed. And this was truly a solo effort. And it wasn't like Arcadia where, where she ran a bit faster, but it was a packed house and so forth. This was different. And she did a much more impressive job. I thought so today. And talking to her afterwards, you can almost hear the tinge of regret. She actually said that she had a little bit more left in the tank. Jeez. Uh, <laughs> okay. Switching over to the boys' action. And there was a lot of action on the track. 100-meter dash. Of course, Roderick Pleasant. <laughs> Obviously, when it comes to attention with this meet, he was a headliner here, and he didn't disappoint. Uh, when Roger came out to the track, he told me right before the 100-meter race, uh, he's feeling a bit nostalgic knowing that this was the last time in terms of CIF high, high school competition he would be out in this stage. Uh, goes out, sets the new meet record, uh, and then comes back in the 200. Goes out in 2067, a fabulous close to, I think, one of the absolutely most decorated speed careers that we've seen here in California. When he won the 100, I admit, I kind of thought he might scratch from the 200 for a few reasons. One of them also the fact that he was coming off of an injury. He ran so well in the 100. Hey, let's go ahead and basically cash in our chips, call it a day. Let's not risk anything. Uh, and that was apparently the plan. He's talking with one of his coaches, uh, Coach Biggs who had mentioned after the 100, Rodney said, or Roderick said he basically felt something, and they said, okay, let's go ahead and shut it down. And that was it. That was going to be the meet. And then as the rest of the meet started playing out, Roderick basically said, you know what, I want to race this. <laughs> and Biggs told him, you know what, if you're going to race it, that's fine, but that means you got to win it. <laughs> and, of course, you know, Roderick was kind of like for it. And then Biggs told him, in order to beat him, what you need to do is you need to jump him on the curve. You need to get him, him being Dijon Stanley of yes. Granada Hills, you need to get him fast on the curve, surprise him, and make him, in a sense, panic a little bit and really force him to try and dig down. Roderick did that to a T. Yes. And I remember something off the curve, Roderick was in control. Yes. And, oh, my goodness. Yes, he was. And there was no answer. And supposedly afterward, you know, uh, Dijon basically mentioned that he was not ready for that. Yeah. That was a bit of a surprise, but that was pretty great. The other half of the equation, Dijon Stanley, Zy Ricks, 400 meters, the other big race. Great battle there, uh, standing right around 200 meters, and they both looked absolutely fantastic coming around that 200 meter curve and then as they start to get toward the 100 I feel as though Dijon kind of hit another gear that he was able to kind of push himself out and that was the difference in the race. Zyrix ran a fantastic race but Dijon Stanley had all the answers here today. Yeah all in all we had a total of two meet records and that being in the boys 100 Roderick Pleasant the 10 20 win legal and then Sadie Engelhart uh, in the 1500 going the 433-45, also nine state leading marks. It might not seem like that's a lot for the year at California State meet, but still some nine performances. One of the great races also occurred in the boys 300 intermediate hurdles. On our, unfortunately, our state leader, Roman Mendoza, Santa Margarita, he went out early on with injury at the CF Finals round. Today, there was a spill in that race. There were basically two DQs. But in the end, there were three athletes <laughs> and the margin of victory. They all had the same official time of 37.44. It had to go the thousandths of a second. But our winner, Daryl Stevens, Long Beach Jordan. And for me, that was a bit of a, of a joyous thing because Jordan was supposed to be one of the top, if not the top team in the state this year on the boys' side. They had prompts coming out of football, kids that came into the season kind of out of shape. And it looked like things were unraveling. Coach was very, very patient with the group, and they began to, week by week, put it together and to go ahead and see them do well in the end and also to go ahead and have Daryl win the state championship was kind of that little cherry on top. <laughs> it's very rare that you see two runners kind of come through at the same time, but to have three broken down into thousands of a second, fabulous stuff there. All right, so a lot of great stuff here at the 103rd Annual CF State Track and Field Championships. Fortunately, a lot of the big stars from this year will be back next year as well. For Jason Eichelberger, I'm Rich Gonzalez, also the rest of our crew. We have Mike Kennedy, Jimmy Sue, and Dylan Stewart. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you.